Hey, and welcome to this in our series um, of St T's Worship Hangouts, um, chatting to friends um, to keep us musically and spiritually sharp. Um, wherever you are, I hope this finds you well. Um, I hope that you can set aside a little bit of time just to, to really watch it and soak in the information and the, the guidance and the, the stuff that, that we're going to go through today. Because I really feel like it will be really helpful for you, both in your kind of personal walk with God and in your musicality um, and in your, your worshiping life. So we're really, really excited today um, to have Chloe joining us. Chloe, I'll leave you to introduce yourself. Um, share with us a little bit about um, who you are um, maybe where people might have seen you before um, and um, yeah what, what is it that you do? Great hi guys so as John said I'm Chloe um, I live in a little town called Fleetwood not far from Blackpool if you know if you've heard of there um, and so I'm a musician I, I do worship in my my home church and I've been invited to various churches um, not so long ago just kind of doing worship churches as well including Jono's um for the Lancaster Music Festival how long ago was that Jono actually just brief briefly remind yeah me. that was in oh. back in October I think October 2019 yeah. yeah so um I visited your church um but uh yeah so I'm a musician and I usually I'm, I'm you'll find me going around the care homes singing to the the older people in the care homes also at church um I'm involved heavily with the worship at my home church and um I sometimes branch out like I say to different other churches to get involved with the worship things um and yeah and I do a few other gigs so I'm, I'm kind of very I've followed the passion with music ever since I was younger um, I, I studied it towards the end of high school when you take GCSEs and went on to study it full um, full time kind of thing in college so I just took music and nothing else um, and then I left left college didn't go on to university just went to kind of go out into the work world with music so yeah so my life is pretty much um, very heavily based um, around music it's been my passion um, I'm 19 nearly I'm 20 this year actually so yeah I'd still say I'm, I'm quite young spring chicken <laughs> and I'm just pursuing it so yeah great it's so Chloe good. as someone who does both kind of performing um I know if people search for you online they'll probably also find from a few years ago um some footage of you when you went on to the X Factor and you went through a few different rounds there that's got quite a significant yeah. viewing on on YouTube I know you've played yeah. different festivals and, and that kind of thing. You play at the Blackpool Tower. Um, so I know you, you do quite a lot of like secular kind of music stuff, if we talk about it in those terms. Um, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. which is more, I suppose, kind of performing rather than yeah. kind of leading people in worship. But then also you lead worship. And what I, I know for some people that can be a really difficult line to tread that obviously we don't want to come across at church as being people who perform and put on a show. And I know yeah. for, there's been a few people in our team that I've spoken to and possibly others as well watching this who maybe feel like, you know, on a, when I'm leading on a Sunday, like at, at what level do I kind of, do, should I perform at all? Should I like really hold back from that and be kind of, is that something that, that you're kind of aware of when you're, particularly in a church context, when you're leading? And how do you kind of navigate that, almost switching between those two as both a performer and a worship leader? Yeah, so that's a great question. So I literally do split the two. Um, so when I'm doing gigs, when I'm doing kind of performances outside of church, which aren't particularly worship songs, the secular, as we said, um, that is a performance so I'd say I'm kind of like a brand you know how people are used in, in the music industry as a brand so you are um, you're judged more maybe um, off of what you bring forward because people are thinking about how you sound how you look all of these different things that um, that count in kind of the secular world as for church it's actually a real blessing for me um, to just completely escape from that because I no longer feel like I am I'm not a product. I'm not someone who's trying to, to get up there and perform. It's, it's not a performance to please people. It's not something that they should be um, examining of, of my abilities. It's more that we all just come together and we just lift to God um, with praise and worship and just we, we lift songs to him. It's no longer about us um, as, a, as a church, as a, you know, um, a gathering where we literally are directing the words we're singing towards God we are glorifying him and um, it is you know I think for for us worship 
leaders and us as different musicians this can be um an obstacle we can hit i you know i've i've thought about this many times in the past and i've prayed on it and just asked god you know if i'm ever doing it in the wrong heart lord can you just realign me because the last thing we want is to look for praise from from congregations and things we want to just praise god and that is you know it's as black and white as it gets really isn't it it's you know you don't want to be up there performing um so like i say i do i split the two so say when i'm singing in care homes and, and up the tower um, and as an expert to the experience as well, that was based on what I'm capable of um, as, as a vocalist and, and people are examining you on that. Um, as for in a church, um, when I'm, you know, joining with the worship team, the glory is no longer for us. It's not about us and what we're, you know, what we're doing or what we're achieving. It's about what we're offering to God. It's an offering. Um, but it's been really blessed for me as a musician to to learn that and to grow in this um in my in my walk with the lord um is yeah he's forever grown me in so many areas and this has been been one in particular i mean i, th I think it's a really i find anyway in my experience it's a really interesting balance where mm. like on one hand we want to bring god our best so we want to yeah. kind of we, we want to stay sharp and I, i'll ask you about that in a moment like we, mm. we want to still like not a, not aspire to perfection for perfection's sake but we we don't, we don't want to bring god like 50 percent of what we're capable of and become lazy with it do we either but there is no. that definitely there's that sense of like yeah i want to uh, I, I i don't want people's eyes to be on me i want i want to be almost invisible in this and actually just enable yeah. the congregation to worship god um yeah, so yeah i suppose like so how you know like technically i've heard you sing a few times live and and sometimes you know on online you know we we were watching the x factor while you're on it and stuff um and like you're an incredible like technical singer and musician so how do you kind of keep yourself sharp in that like do you have particular kind of ways that you like we can get really practical here particularly for singers who might be watching this like do, do you find like you have a particular warm-up pattern do you find that you like rehearsing at home like what what technique and tips would you give people who maybe think do you know, i, I want to maybe get more confident with my voice or i want to get better at maybe hearing harmonies or fitting stuff in my range or extending my like all that kind of more technical vocal stuff um like how do you kind of navigate that and and what what do you do yeah so i'll backtrack a little bit to basically my journey so as um being interested in music i've been interested in music and singing ever since i was younger um so we're talking maybe six seven um i've always loved music but i didn't start learning technically how to sing until i was 11. um so i just entered high school and i i grew up with my best friend actually this is a another thing that comes into this this answer so me and my best friend georgia grew up basically on the same street we'd play out you know as young people do and just and enjoy life and and so we'd we'd often be singing when we were playing out on the street um and particularly going into the harmony subject with that that is how i learned how to harmonize um in a very just by ear because i wouldn't say as a musician for me particularly um that i am theory based i know a few bits and bobs of theory um when playing guitar piano you know chords different things chord progressions and all of that but as for actually reading music that's something i struggle with i've tried to learn it in college but i've never grasped it i'm more of someone who can hear by ear um in music and everyone's different some people are really good at just literally looking at the dots and um, so with harmonizing for me it was a, a matter of practicing with somebody who was also musical um, and also learning an instrument so guitar and piano um just knowing chords and knowing like you know usually there's three notes within a chord and knowing which ones match you just i picked that up by ear so by knowing the chords it just kind of it, it went into into my mind and i just was aware of which chords sounded well together when you've got different notes different notes within the chord sorry um so that's for harmony so practicing with my my best friend growing up literally we did it nearly every day i think um and it just it just absorbed and and it's a blessing really because now i can i can not even um, I don't even have to know a song. I can just literally hear one line of it. Um, if it's quite a repetitive, you know, um, melody, I can pick up a harmony really quickly. Um, 
But I started singer lessons, this is also going back to, to your earlier question on te technique and different things with singing. I started singing lessons at 11 years old. I didn't really know much about what actually went into singing. I was just really into the, the idea of singing and I, um, I do it often. But as I, I went to my um, vocal coach, Jill, she was telling me all about the, the importance of warming up before you're doing a gig, before you're doing any kind of performance, because if you don't warm up, then it's like someone running a, a marathon and they don't, you know, stretch the, they don't stretch and, and warm up the muscles. You're going to pull something, you're going to strain something. Um, so it's the same with the voice and these muscles in your, in your throat and also in your diaphragm. Um, I learned all about that. So I do, um, whenever I'm approaching a performance on a, a day, an evening, um, I make sure that I warm up before I, I do a long period of singing because otherwise I will feel a strain after I've been singing for quite a while if I haven't warmed up. Um, and as for type of warm ups, scales, humming, I've learned different things that, you know, different kind of warm ups that really do suit my capability. Um, and that I've just grown comfortable to, but it's also good to stretch yourself as well. So if you want to try new ones, YouTube's a really good one. That's what I go to. So there's YouTube, um, just type in warm ups in the search bar and you'll find different ones that will lead you through it. Um, I remember my singing teacher had particular ones that she um, would lead me to on YouTube during my lesson with her. It was a one, one to one um, tutor session once a week and it massively does help you warming up. Like I say, it's, it prevents you from doing um, permanent damage to your vocals. And it also, just doing warm-ups as well, can really help you to, to broaden your range when you, when you stretch yourself in different ways and also um, trying songs that are sometimes out of your comfort zone. So for me, I'd say I've, see, with theory terms, I don't really, is it alto, the middle, the middle kind of range? Yeah. Um, and the soprano is the higher, so, I'd maybe try a, a song that suited sopranos more um, and just and take it in sections just to kind of build up that um, ability to achieve those notes in, in, the, in you know, the higher range. Um, that's, that's another way I've kind of you know, focused on, on building my musical technique. Um, but one more thing as well, I sometimes say if I don't have, um, if I don't use a, a warm up on YouTube, I may just go to a song out of my set list that is, generally not too difficult to sing kind of on quite a, a middle range um for me and that's quite good to warm up to um prior to the actual event or whatever performance i'm i'm, I'm beginning um so yeah that's yeah. typically how i how, how i go about warming up and and yeah just maintaining that technical um ability great because i think sometimes in a, in a church context, not particularly even just our team, I think just generally, like it can be quite, because it is more informal than a gig, because obviously you're not getting paid or the vast majority of people anyway, aren't, aren't being paid to sing at church and you often turn yeah. up with family and there's other stuff going on. I yeah, think absolutely. sometimes we can be like at, at risk of maybe being a little bit blasé with it. And I know, I know for me, certainly, like I know if the weeks that I don't warm up in the car on the way in, yeah. I, I yeah. feel that in my voice and I notice that. And I think like, right. again, it's, we, we don't want to over-professionalize it and say like, everyone has to be an amazing technician and da, da, da. Yeah, But yeah. like there's certain things that are just good practice that, that, that just mean that you're going to get the most out of what you, what you bring in before, yeah. God, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's, um, that's really good, John. I remember there's actually um, an example of, basically when I didn't warm up to a, we have worship practice on a Thursday evening usually. And I didn't warm up that particular night. And generally for me, the songs that we sing on the worship team are generally higher um, than my usual range. Like I say, I'm kind of middle alto. So I do often use my harmony techniques and go underneath the, because um, we have, usually have about three singers supporting one another. Um, so we have that, you know, blessed capability of one doing a harmony above, one doing one lower, and then the, the middle one taking the, the normal melody. But um yeah, so I didn't warm up on, on one Thursday night and I couldn't sing on Sunday. So it can be that bad. It can be that, um, effect, it can affect you to that point where if you do not warm up um, or at least just give your, your vocals some introduction to, you know, the practice, 
then you can you can risk not singing on Sunday because I literally could not I, I could I could speak but I was not able to sing. I was so uncomfortable um, and in pain um, after not warming up because I'd sung on on the Thursday night um, songs that were new. They were introduced to the set list that were new and they was higher than um, higher than I usually find myself singing. Yeah. Um, so in response, yeah, that was you know warming warming up is important even if you can just get five minutes in there just like um you can do like trills like and you can do scales just even before as people are tuning up their instruments just do something um just to introduce your your vocals to obviously practicing yeah and um, it makes it makes the difference it really does fantastic now Chloe you're, you're going to sing for us in a minute which I'm really looking forward to um but just before just before you do can we ask you for one if people are going to go away from this and listen go and take a listen to something that's going to inspire them like do you have a particular um like Christian artist or church um that's like top of your playlist like if you could give us like in 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 a one word answer um who who would it be that people could go away, Google, find on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, and be inspired by. Yeah. So at the moment on my playlist, I've been listening to, I don't know if you've heard of them, Maverick City. So it's a group of Christian singers. They do um, worship and praise quite often. And the top of my playlist is a song called You Keep On Getting Better. And wow, I love it so much. I love singing along. Um, I love the 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 lead singer i think she's called rose but it could be emily rose i'm not sure you'll just google it and um, youtube it and you'll find you'll find the um the very song but absolutely fantastic and when i sing along with um with them just when i'm playing the song through my speaker i actually challenge myself and try and sing how they, they do a lot of riffs and i absolutely love it so that is the um the song I've been listening to last seen on my speakers recently. So if you get a chance, it's Maverick City, you keep on getting better. Um it's probably about seven minutes long, but wow, it's so good. It's really, mm. really it's it's such a an amazing song and they're so gifted, like the Lord has gifted them vocally um with with such an incredible ability. So it's yeah, it's been really, awesome. really refreshing to listen to that. Right. So yeah, maybe particularly if, if you're watching this and you're a singer, that might be one to to listen yeah. to and challenge yourself with. And yeah, maybe that's one to experiment with. Find a quiet room somewhere and try and pick yeah. some harmonies out and that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Fantastic. that sounds good. I hope you found that helpful. For those of you listening, um, yeah, what a treat. And um, yeah, make, do make sure as well that you you check Chloe out on on socials if you're on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, do check her out. Um, there's stuff on YouTube as well, isn't there? You've got different kind of both worship covers and some some secular stuff on on youtube as well if people want to go away and have a listen um and you're chloe rose moyle aren't you absolutely thank you thanks jenna for having me today um it's been blessed to chat with you and i hope your team and everybody's keeping well and you're all yeah having a blessed a blessed day so here goes this is build my life a beautiful worship song <laughs> Open up my eyes in water 
Lord, we long to be right 